I just managed to snap the handle of my normal fretting hammer and I'm not going to replace it just yet. Uh, it's important that the face of your hammer is nice and smooth. Uh, the one that I used to use is a cobbler's hammer. Lovely smooth for working leather and stuff like that. And slightly heavier than this as well. But this will do nicely. Now, I use no more nails. It's a nice gap fitting adhesive. Uh, it's not in there to hold the frets in. The fretboard holds the frets in. This is simply to fill any any gaps that there might be underneath at the bottom and to make the fretboard one homogenized bit of material again. Uh, and this is to help uh, tuning stability. These frets came in a coil and are already slightly bent. Put it in place. Do not be afraid to hammer your fret in. Pressure is the whole point. Pressure is the whole point of what we're doing. Now, the best thing about this glue is it's easy to clean up. Some people use super glue, which within obviously a couple of seconds is nice and dry and you have to chisel or scrape it all off. Other people use epoxy, which while you can probably clean it off while it's still wet, you can't do because the people who use epoxy are clamping it in. So what they do is they mask the fretboard off with uh, either masking tape or something like that, or they put wax everywhere where the frets won't be. Now I've wiped away most of the mess of the glue, and I'm going to go back and double check. You see that? That meant that there was a minuscule gap along that fret. almost always is and that now shows me that those frets are perfectly seated perfectly flat against the fretboard and it's absolutely ideal there are various ways in which people say that you can hammer your frets in. The most common is from the ends. Effectively you tap one end in, you tap the other end in, and then you work it out from the middle. Now what this does, or is purported to do, is it pushes the tangs in at the end, and then it pushes the tangs out underneath the wood. So there's still wood on top of them. Uh, so effectively the tang goes down and out. Now this means that it is less likely, so the proponents of this method say, it is less likely for the frets to lift. I have no problems with that. My frets don't lift because I've got the right size slot for the, the fret etc. The problem I have with that is if you've put tangs down in a slot and across they're underneath wood and when somebody comes to refret it they're going to rip half the fretboard away when they do. Uh, for that reason I literally I tend to hammer straight down go from the middle out and uh, this method works for me fine. There is another method of installing frets that uh, 
Fender did many years ago. And effectively, they file a point on the tang and put the fret in from the side and literally hammer it in sideways. This has the same thing. It means that the tangs aren't going down and, and stressing the wood ab above them. They're going in sideways and uh, it means that they very rarely uh, fall out. But they again are a bugger to remove and uh, it's also a, a not very fun installing them uh, using this method. Now there are three types of fret wire. You have your nickel silver, which has no silver in it, it's uh, a nickel and brass composite. Oh, composite. Nickel and brass alloy. And uh, that is softer than any other type of fret. Uh, incidentally it's the same material that they make model railway tracks out of. But anyway, the nickel silver is fine, especially if you've got a good quality type of it, because uh, the, some of the cheaper, nastier stuff is very, very soft, and that can give you issues with the fret deforming as you hammer it in, or the tang, if you hit it slightly off center, the tang will um, go off center so it won't be a T anymore. Good quality nickel silver fret wire is fairly hard, tends not to deform when you're uh, installing the frets and more importantly for the guitarist, if you drop the guitar and the strings uh, hit the frets they tend not to put dents into the fret wire. The second type of fret wire is stainless steel which is growing in prominence nowadays and this is much harder it lasts supposedly three times longer, though how you'd measure that I don't know. And uh, it purportedly makes your instrument slightly brighter. I can't hear the difference. I doubt that anybody could. And if there was a difference, tweak your treble control just a little bit and you're sorted. Uh, it does cost a little bit more to make. It costs a little bit more to install but in the long run you're not going to be refretting your instrument uh, every six or seven years. Well, etc. If you normally take six years to fret your instrument, it, it will be 18 years before you need to because the stainless steel is so much harder. The third option is a hypoallergenic brass fret wire, which feels not quite so soft not quite so hard as steel, uh, but much harder than nickel silver. And the bonus with this stuff is it's, it looks gold, uh, especially when polished up, and it's pretty. You could use side cutters to do this. So the frets have been glued in place. I've got the neck in the uh, in a vise there. Now the fret ends, which are sharp as sharp pointy thing. Need to be filed flush with the fretboard. When you're doing this always file towards the fretboard. You don't want to run the risk of pulling the fret out. That would just be silly. When using tools like a file or a chisel, especially when you have something which is finished and pretty much ready for finishing, you always keep as many points of contact with that tool as you can. Okay, once you've got your frets flush with the fretboard, and obviously they're going to be square because uh, I was just taking the sharp edges off, you need to file them at a 45 degree angle to the board. This is for comfort more than anything else. Uh, I use a file 
that I've just glued into a little handle. It feels like a plane, it feels like a little uh, little plane in my hand. And if you listen, you can hear the metal. And there we change sound. And that means I'm filing the wood. There you go. I'm filing a corner on the wood and the metal. Which is what we want. A vintage instrument, or an instrument that's been played a lot, that fretboard will be rounded over just through natural use. And it always feels more comfortable than having a hard edge, especially on this side. We now have our frets at a 45 degree angle to the fretboard, but the edges are still nice and sharp and uncomfortable. So we need to round those over. This is a little file that I modified myself. I've rounded over and flattened the two edges so that when I use it for this job it doesn't dig into the fretboard too much and now and you carefully round over each fret so that when it's polished it's not going to dig into your finger and make the playing uncomfortable. The final stage, wrap some paper around your finger and using my finger as a sanding block I'm rounding both the edge giving it that uh, played in vintage feel and I'm polishing the end of the frets. The friction meanwhile is making my fingers hot.